What's up guys, in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to master your song in Cubase using Cubase stock plugins only. So without wasting much of your time, let's get into the video. We're going to aim for integrated somewhere around negative 9 and then for short term somewhere around negative 7. So let's just put it here and we'll be listening to this as we push our optimize. As soon as I started using things to my own advantage, you just started hating on me. But what's so cool when I got nothing? I see your pretty smile when you end, when you got you something. You were so steady on our ground. Remember when I told you that you was my brother? Hi, my name is Jay. I make music production tutorials on YouTube for beginners in Cubase and FL Studio. So if you're new to this channel, make sure you consider subscribing and click that post notification bell so that you get notified every time I upload a brand new video. So today's video is very special because a lot of people have requested for it. A lot of people have requested for a detailed mastering tutorial. So I decided to make one. So before we get started, first of all, we need to understand what mastering is. I would love to state the difference between mixing and mastering. These are two totally different processes. In mixing, what we do is simply trying to achieve the perfect balance in terms of the vocals and the instruments. And then mastering, on the other hand, is just this process of simply preparing your entire mix or your entire song for playback on different platforms. For example, mobile devices, streaming platforms, and so on. Sometimes the process of mastering can be so complex, but in today's video, I'm trying to make this tutorial as simple as possible, and that's the reason why we're even using only Cubase stock plugins. The most important thing to look at when it comes to mastering is loudness. We want to get our mix or our song to a certain point of loudness where it will compete with commercial songs or day-to-day -day songs that we listen to. And that's uh, the loudness that we're going to focus on. So there is what is called LUFS. LUFS is simply is the loudness unit for scale. So this is the scale that shows us how loud our mix is. And one thing I would like to point out is that peak and loudness are two different things. The peak of the sound wave is simply the highest point of the wave. And it doesn't directly give us the, the actual loudness. Let's say, for example, if your peak is at zero, it doesn't mean every type of playback that is hitting the zero mark in terms of dBs has the same amount of loudness. That's completely not true. And I'm stating this because I've had this question before. I've had people tell me to say, but my mix was at zero, so the loudness is at zero. Loudness and peak in terms of dBs are not the same. Loudness is simply the overall power in the, in the sound. And this is given out by a combination of a lot of peaks, the area around the sound waves, which gives it the power. And every time when you're mastering, you need to be able to monitor the level of loudness and know which loudness level do you want to take your mix to. There are a lot of uh, plugins that can show us the loudness. Apart from the stock plugins that we're going to use in Cubase, we're going to use a free plugin called Ulin Loudness Meter. I'll put the link in the description just to show us the loudness. It is a completely free plugin. I'll leave the link in the description. You can go and download it. So you can pick the loudest part of your mix. I've just made sure that this will be looping here because I don't need to come back and forth to play back the same place. So I'll just do that and make sure I, I loop it. So for those that are using Cubase 5, you can just follow these steps. All these plugins are there in Cubase 5. So we can go to our master, just click this. This is just my MV meter, which was helping me monitor the levels of my mix when mixing this song. So if I play this, this is around negative 6 dB. I was mixing around negative 6 dB. So sometimes you may mix up to negative 3 dB, some go up to 0, which is not even recommended because you need to leave some, some headroom. So now that we've all 
all learned a lot of things we've all understood if you've been following this channel my first tutorial on the, we are moving from negative three to zero db but a lot of years have passed since then we've learned a lot of things so we need to be moving so now we are mixing below negative six db if you haven't watched the video on how to do that please check the videos on my channel on mixing you'll find a video where we're mixing below negative six db if i play this you'll see that i'm somewhere around negative negative 6 db as my maximum peak as soon as i was using things to my own advantage you just started hitting on me but what's so cool when i got nothing i see your pretty smile when you end when you got you were so steady on our ground remember when i told you that you was my brother you never changing you gonna be my heart forever so my average is negative 6 db remove this here and then we'll go to my master. So this is the MV meter, it's on my master. The first thing that I'm going to add in my mastering chain is EQ. So I'm going to get studio EQ from here because we want to push this mix to a certain point of loudness. Usually when there's too much bass in the mix, you can't really achieve that clean loudness. Just to ensure that we go as loud as we can, we need to push a little bit of our high end just to give our mix that presence. I'm going to drag this, I'll just drag it all the way until I'm somewhere 5,000, for example here, and then I'll just push it up and make sure not more than 3 db and then we can come here and then the same thing just push this below a bit make sure you're somewhere around 100 days and just push it down a bit not more than 3 db maybe maybe 3.2 3.5 somewhere there so if i play this as soon as I started using things to my own advantage, you just started hating on me. But what's so cool when I got nothing? I see your pretty smile when you end, when you got what The difference is not that much and this is what we are doing so just a little bit of this tweaking will make a very big difference it's not supposed to be very much of this so if i just switch switch on and off this you see the difference as soon as i started using things to my own advantage you just started hitting on me but what's so cool when i got nothing i see your pretty smile when you end when you got you want to steady on the ground remember when i told you that you so this just gives our mix a little bit of clarity and softness. So after that, we're going to put a compressor because we want to make sure that our mix is evenly distributed. Imagine a situation where you're listening to a song and then at some point it's very loud, at some point it's very low and just takes away that vibe. So it has to be consistent in terms of loudness. And that's the reason why the next our next plugin is a compressor just to limit those things so let's just add a compressor here yeah, just this compressor from cubase and then let's just set our attack to somewhere 20 milliseconds or maybe 20.5 milliseconds also our release to 20 milliseconds so this is both a fast attack and a fast release and then for the compressor in cubase 5 there isn't this the the analysis for those that are using Cubase Pro 10.5, just take this to 50% and then we can remove our makeup from auto and then dry mix, we can take it to 50%. So let me just play this and we make sure that the reduction here is just negative 3, not more than that. We're going to control this by using our threshold. As soon as I started using things to my own advantage, you just started hitting on me. But what's so cool when I got nothing? I see a when you push the threshold upwards, you reduce less. So this is negative 3.7. If I push the threshold upwards, it means I'll be going now to towards negative 3.0. So let's just do that. As soon as I started using things to my own advantage, you just started hitting on me. So you can always click here just to refresh this. Just click on that. You refresh this. So three negative three point one is okay. 
So we are done with the compressor. So after the compressor, we can put a plugin called Stereo Enhancer just to give it that width. And then we can just set this to 100 just as it comes. So if I play this, so what this plugin does is it gives our mix that width and spreads our mix in the left and the right so the next one we're going to put here is a maximizer and we're going to use the maximizer to achieve the level of loudness that we are looking for so i'm just going to put a maximizer here so what the maximizer does is it boosts the sound without making it clip because of this this soft clip function down here. So we're going to use this maximizer by using the optimize knob here to boost our mix to the point that we want it to be. So now the question we can ask is what is the loudness that we're aiming for? So the loudness that we're aiming for is somewhere around negative 9 LUFS, maybe short term somewhere around negative seven. So this is common for most of these songs that we listen to. We're going to put a plugin called Yulin Loudness Meter. It will show us the LUFS of our master here. So there's short term integrated and all this. So we're going to aim for integrated somewhere around negative nine and then for short term somewhere around negative seven. So let's just put it here and we'll be listening to this as we push our optimize. Alright, so this is it for our loudness. So this is the loudness that we were aiming for and we have it now. So just make sure that when you are pulling this loudness, you make sure that this doesn't go, your reduction is here, this is where it shows it doesn't go more than negative three. So this is around negative two, three, somewhere around that area. If you find that, as you push your loudness here, before you reach negative eight LUFS, this goes above negative three, maybe you're somewhere negative four, negative five, then make sure that you set it to somewhere where it is negative three, and then add another maximizer down here and then start pushing again, but do not go more than negative three. Because what happens if, for example, in the compressor, if this goes above negative three, you're going to have that sound where as you listen to your song, at some point it is squashed, and then at some point it comes out. So that effect is what we're trying to avoid. That's the reason why we're only getting negative three or less dB reduction. You can listen to the whole song. And the reason why we want to listen to the whole song now is we want to know how these uh, changes will affect other parts of our song. The bushes get you noticed twice as fast. What's the hassle and hitting all the bells? As soon as I start using things to my own advantage. Alright, so if you noticed, it took some time for the LUFS to build up and go to negative 9. It started from 14, then coming down. And the reason is because the LUFS is not the peak loudness so what happens is it gathers all that power the combination of all the sound wave peaks and then puts it as an average so after playing a certain period of time then it gives us the the average loudness in the mix and this is what we're aiming for all right guys thanks a lot for watching hope you enjoyed this video and if you did please don't forget to give it the thumbs up if you're new to this channel consider subscribing and click that post notification bell so that you get notified every time i upload a brand new video feel free to follow me on instagram send me some messages and let's interact from there my name is jay see you in my next video and i'm out